is just going to be a quick video demo on how to build the duck bill. So you've got your interfacing pieces. This is Pelon 830, but any lightweight non-fusible will do. Um, then you've got your main fabric pieces. They're the same shape as the interfacing, but doubled over. The way you do it is you just place one interfacing piece on the main fabric. You fold it over as evenly as possible. Then we're going to stitch along the top to tack down the interfacing and hold on to it. This will be the top half of the mask. We're going to assemble it the same way, but we're going to add one four inch piece of ribbon centered on along the top. Um, this ribbon will form the tunnel that we can put our nose piece wire into. need to go and tack down the bottom strip, the bottom part of that ribbon as well. My ribbon is very narrow, so I'm having to have a real tight tolerance on my seam. I would recommend getting a slightly wider ribbon, but this is just all I had. Also, if you don't have any ribbon, you could just use scrap pieces of the fabric and just finish it under to make this tunnel as well. That would work just as well. It's just a little bit extra work. Next, we're going to take our two inch pieces of ribbon and we're just going to line them up along the top of the mask and we're going to stack the two halves on top of each other and just put a quick pin in it so that it holds while we stitch it. We're going to do that on each side. I just fold it over and then the loop goes on the inside. And I'm just going to stitch all the way around the sides and the bottom. You want to give yourself a, a pretty decent seam allowance, maybe half an inch, just to help you catch all the, all the layers. Next, we're just going to go and double check to make sure we got everything. It's not unusual for me to have a little bit of seam popping up, so you want to make sure you fix that before you go and top stitch it. So just flip it inside out and really look at this seam. This looks good. I got everything. So the next step we're going to do is this one's in pretty decent shape, but if you have a little overhang, it's a good time to just go and trim anything excess up just so that you don't have a lot of bulk in your finished mask along this seam. Just tidy it up a little bit. Then we're going to flip it right side out. I like to really push the corners out just to make sure they're as sharp as they can be. And pull these straight so that you tuck in as much of that seam as possible. Then we're just going to top stitch all the way around the side and bottom again and we're going to take special care to try to catch this area with the ribbon. Um, my machine does not like to start up at the top, it just gets stuck so I go about half to three quarters of an inch down and then I just back up to get that.
now I have a completed duckbill mask. You just trim up all your loose edges, and I'll just show you how it works. You could put whatever kind of wire you have. This is a twist or a fuzzy stick in there. You might need to trim it up a little bit to make it the right size. That forms your nose piece. You can loop through whatever kind of tie you like to use. I'm using a piece of shock cord right now. Um, the shock cord works pretty well with 36 inches. If you're going to use a tie, I like giving them about 48 inches. I'm going to tie mine with a sliding knot. That way they can adjust how big this is so it doesn't hurt anybody's head. And you have a completed duckbill mask.